Hello everybody, this is Scott Roberts with Explore Scientific and I've got Kent Martz and Jerry Hubble with me today and this is episode 16 of the Open Go To Live community um, uh, program and uh, today, uh, yesterday we showed everyone how to use um, uh, Stellarium with, uh, with the PMC-8 and how to connect that and operate it remotely. Um, we, uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to show you, uh, the Mark Slade Remote Observatory. Now, this observatory has a, uh, G11, Las Mandy G11, running the PMC-8 with it. Um, uh, it has a telescope drive master attached to it for, to control, uh, drive errors, um, you know, and to give, you know, sub arc second tracking ability. Uh, it is driving uh, an Explore Scientific ED-165 with FPL-53 glass. Um, and uh, virtually everything on it is uh, from Explore Scientific, uh, with the exception of like electric focuser system. Uh, the focuser itself, I think, is a moonlight, as I recall. Um, and right. uh, so, and, and this telescope is uh, in continual remote use. Uh, uh, on most clear nights, they're using it for their uh, uh, precision photometry work that they do, and it's already got one exoplanet discovery under its under its belt. So that's very cool. Um, uh, so uh, I'll let uh, Jerry take it away, but I, I believe that the, uh, the, uh, the 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 software that's controlling the pointing of this would be Cart Is that correct, Jerry? Yeah, we use Cart to Seal uh, uh, connected. So I'll go through like we did with uh, Stellarium, how we configure that, and also I'm going to be going through the configuration. We use Maxim DL, so I'll be going through the configuration settings for Maxim DL in case uh, there's some out there that are interested in that software. Cool. Uh, and as always, we use Poth to tie everything together with our mount. So I just had a. a a broadcast note I noticed on the uh, I brought up the YouTube feed and it's titled Wednesday instead of Thursday uh, June oh, 25th. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it I'll fix it so, yeah right. I just I just yeah. noticed that no, I just so that's no big you're deal. on your toes this is a test yeah that's right so uh, so if you, you want to share my desktop or no you know so yeah <laughs> anyhow well it is episode 16, and so we're glad to have you here. Did the, uh, yeah, if you could share my desktop. Okay, will do. Here we go. There you are. Okay. All right, so what I've got up right now is uh, on the front is, as you can see, there's a bunch of windows here. Over here on the lower uh, left is the Poth Hub that's tied to the uh, mount control, the PMC-8. And so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna bring up the setup for that. And this is similar to what we did with Stellarium yesterday. Um, so you, the first thing you'll do is choose the telescope. Let me, uh, let me go to 100% so that's easier. That probably looks a little better. So you'll choose, I'll bring up the ASCOM chooser. And on the path, you want to select the driver for the PMC-8, which, which is labeled ES underscore PMC-8 dot telescope. And you'll go to the properties. And you'll see I've got selected here, Laws Bandy G11. Uh, we're using a serial connection. So you have that checkbox there, that radio button. Uh, that's on COM port 4. We've got a bunch of COM ports. We use seven different connections to cameras and, and the focuser and and the uh, weather station. And we also have uh, the dome that we use all through the USB ports. We have a big USB hub that we connect everything through. Um, so if you look at the, the site data, this is actual the location for the MSRO. And um, we've got, I just, we don't, um, we actually use pulse guiding 
through the PMC-8 with the telescope drive master, and I've got that set to 0.4 times the sidereal rate fraction. That's the sidereal rate fraction is 0.40%. And I think that's pretty much it for this setup for the driver. And then we'll hit OK, hit OK, and then I'll connect up to the mount. And you can see how it pops up the data there. One of the features that I didn't really talk about much yesterday that the path has is the hour angle, and you can toggle between the hour angle and the uh, right ascension value on the path right here. The hour angle is good to watch because it tells you how close you are to the meridian. And when it's negative, that means it's in the future and to the east. I always call that the future. The east is the future and the west is the past. That's kind of the way I keep it straight in my head. So right now uh, we're park position is six hours into the future. And I'm going to... I'm going to actually, instead of using Poth to unpark and turn tracking on, I'm going to use Maxim DL once we connect to it. So now I'll move over. So I've already connected to the webcam, and you can see the telescope here. Um, I'll enlarge that just a little bit more. I can actually zoom in on it. Okay, cool. Hey, Jerry, how tall is the pier? Because from this angle, it looks like it's about yeah. nine feet tall. Yeah, it's actually about seven feet tall. You can see the door here. See where the door is on the right-hand side? That's a full-size, normal outside door. I see. So that this building is seven foot. It's like a seven-foot cube, okay? And then on top of it is a six-foot dome. Webcams always make everything look somehow further away and bigger. Right. <laughs> Wide angle, and this is a Wide low angle, angle lens. Port right, this is down below the window on that side of the building. Uh, let me. I'm going to zoom up on the uh, on this thing so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to reposition. Hey Jerry, while you're doing that, uh, James, the astro fat photographer or fatographer, a fatographer. <laughs> yeah, he's he's offering to send you a nine volt battery for the smoke detector. Oh uh, yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We have all offered to send him a battery for the smoke detector. I, I, he can't get to it because location. it's like way up, on, way up high and, you know, I, I've yeah. it doesn't have a ladder big shotgun. enough. I've offered to shoot it with a shotgun to put it out of its misery <laughs> or put it out of our misery. We've done so many of these shows now, I don't even hear it anymore. So, Well, that's, that's the true. plan. That's, that's the true. plan. I don't hear it. All right. The, uh, the, uh, so here's this close-up of the telescope. Now I'm going to open the dome here in a minute. Um, I'm going to back off this just a tiny bit. Now, the dome control is coming in from what application? So we use, a, we use an application called Digital. It's actually a control system called Digital Dome Works. Okay. Um, that we have, uh, that Maxim DL will connect to directly. And uh, I'm just going to adjust this just a little bit more. <laughs> Gary Palmer says, I've always have a big head on a webcam. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Me too, but it's actually because I do have a big head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's all half size, so what does that tell you about me? So, right. Wes, Wes, Wes McDonald, McDonald says, I've offered to come and blow it off the ceiling. He's got to be talking about Yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Right. Well... You know, mm -hmm. that's the way it is. <laughs> Y'all just have to deal with it. That's right. His, <laughs> his so who do we have here? We've got so Ermy Bogdan, um, uh, Gary Palmer, Bergman Scooter, uh, James, the astrophotographer, Ellsworth Mayhew. Yeah. Uh, SWR Fund is actually my account, just a different account. So, um, Shannon Templeton Morgan. It's back for me. Yep. Okay. Yep. Shannon. I'm back. Um, and of course, yourself, MSRO Science, Wes McDonald, David, uh, Dave Nin, Nin uh, from Temecula. I probably ruined that, Dave. I'm sorry. Um, but glad to have you here, dude. So. 
each one of these items in Maxim, you've got a setup tab for the observatory window. This is the main observatory control window. Okay. And it's got tabs for every the different devices that you have in the observatory, the the telescope, the dome, the focuser, the weather station, the webcam, and then also the switches. So the switches, you see the switch configuration. We have a digital loggers web power switch that we can power up remotely over the internet to power everything up and down. But we, we typically leave the PMC-8 and the observatory computer and the dome powered up all the time. And then the other stuff, the stuff we power down is basically the uh, the wet new cameras and the TDM. So you can see on the webcam display over on the right hand side is where the switches are controlled. And I'm going to, so right here is the telescope drive master controller right here. You can yeah. see where my cursor is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it on and then you'll see it light up here. See it? Yep. I don't know if you can see it online, yeah, kind of but that's yeah. but Scott can see it. It's yep. sitting there flashing. And then I'm not going to power the camera on uh, in terms of this is for the thermoelectric cooler. I can still connect the camera if I wanted to through the USB port, but it won't have the cooler turned on. Uh, the other things I've got is the telescope dome and I connected to the digital dome works uh, controller. Uh, the focuser has got the moonlight controller, um, which is strapped to the pier. And then the telescope is the path hub, okay? And that, I'll connect that up. So right now, so now Maxim can, has, has everything connected that we use. Uh, and I'll, so what I'm going to do right now, if you watch down here at the path, it says unpark and track. I'm going to do it here. I'm going to unpark it with the Maxim. All right. Yeah. And now it's unparked and it's tracking. So if you look down at the path, you can see that's state there. I'm going to open the dome and then I'll show it to you in the camera. It's a sunny day here, so it should be all right. Sunny over here too. So I'm going to have to um, adjust this again. James, the astrophotographer, says, I honestly love these videos. You guys demonstrate the amazing cap capabilities of these mounts and the versatility that they provide to individual needs. James, you could write ad copy for us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And Dave says that, that everybody gets it wrong. Dave Ng. Okay, so that, thank you for helping me out with that. So, okay, so the dome's the opening, right? Open. You can kind of see the dome sliding open. Now, um, Jerry, how long has this been running? Where, I mean, we're, I mean, I would think that any remote observatory has got to have like a catastrophic kind of uh, failure, you know, where. Yeah, something goes wrong. Something breaks. Something. Oh yeah, we've had we've had a couple of catastrophic type of failures, and it's really it's the uh, the dome that is big has given us our most problems. Actually, the is that because of binding of things or? Well, this is a cable driven system. It's like a winch. Yeah. Okay. It's got a cable through some pulleys all along here okay. uh, where the sutter slides to, and it puts it creates tension on both sides, so it creates tension. When it opens and when it pulls, so you got springs on either end of the cable to do that tension. But it's got a winch that it like a like is on a uh, four wheel drive vehicle that actually turns like a screw jack and it winches it open and winches it closed through those cables. And we've had the cables uh, bound up and or spring off. And if you can imagine the way the cable wraps around the uh, screw threads, it's like a winch. Okay, yeah. except it's all ones long screw thread and uh i think i've got a pictures of it here hold on i, I, I can bring up where's uh, that well that's not it wes wes mcdonald uh suggests we don't point at the sun that's yeah no we're not going to do that <laughs> all right so i've got some pictures here that i can bring up okay the details there we go um so you see the winch here? Yeah. 
Oh, right, I that's, see. That's, the cable's wound around that winch. All right. That screw thread. And the cables are run all along the dome there like that. And it, so as the, as the motor turns it, it pulls it and winds it and unwinds it onto this onto the screw threaded rod mm -hmm. and the, see where the spring is down here at the lower left that that came loose one time and it and it came up and it un, unwound itself so this is under tension right but when it comes loose it coils up and becomes a big bunched up knot of steel cable it's called a bird's nest in the fishing world right and that's that's what happened there's a motor for the driver or for the for the dome also Let's see what else I got. There's the controller. I see. But that's that's how uh, that's how it works, and that's the biggest problem is the maintenance on that the cable maintenance every year. Yeah. And we've actually replaced the cable. We and the motor failed us last year, so we had to the shutter motor. So we had to find a replacement. And digital and. Uh, Technical Innovations does not sell this old dome control system anymore. This thing is 20 years old. Uh, it was it was it came from the Mark Slade uh, uh, estate when uh, we built the observatory originally. We got all a lot of this equipment from the Mark Slade estate. It was named after him. Um, in 2015 is when we built the observatory at the end of 2015 and commissioned it and started it up in. February of 2016. Maybe you'll have to upgrade your dome with one of our domes later this year. That would that would be awesome uh, to put one of those domes in service and test it out and sure. see how it works in the long term. Uh, but yeah, so that's the biggest problem we've had. Uh, we've had a few issues. We did have our computer fail on us early on, um, which was a donated computer system. We bought a brand new computer system and it's been pretty reliable over the last three or three years plus, I think three and a half years. Um, so that's where we're at with that. We have a couple, um, couple of comments here. We should probably get to these before they get to, we get too long in the tooth of this program. Gary Palmer okay. wants to know, do you have an outside camera so you, could, so you don't open and dump six feet of snow in the observatory? We actually do have a... Uh, Skycam on one of our other stations. The MSRO, we have got three stations uh, set up. This is station one, the main one. Uh, we've got uh, our Skycam, which is mounted on the station two, which has got our 12 inch LX200 uh, equatorial um, fork mounted equatorial mount uh, on that. And it's remotely operated along. And then we've got the third station is. Um, We've got our FCD 100 102 scope on it uh, with the moonlight focuser also, and we we converted a old uh, Celestron CGE mount that Myron had to PMC8 as a one-off test system uh, mm -hmm. to convert the motor control system over to that uh, that we have on Station Three. And also, we don't get six feet of snow. Early. Right, no, we, we get about a foot of snow maybe sometimes. Uh, although in the 1970s, we used to get a lot more snow than mm -hmm. we do this, you know. Uh, and Jerry, you live like, what, four miles away? So you know if it snowed there or not pretty well. Oh, absolutely. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's about four miles as the crow flies. And Mr. Thump 30 says he's looking to buy a new mount as I feel I am getting too heavy for optimal use on my AVX. Considering he's considering an EQ6R Pro, which I probably is a great mount. Uh, what is your recommendations for 20 to 25 pounds of gear? I would say, I mean, day in day out, we recommend our Exos 2 uh, with PMC8. But uh, if you're looking for something that's like what I would call baseball bat proof, then you would put it, put it on a G11. I'm mounting. I'm mounting the, uh, you can see behind me here, there's an ED-102 with the 80 millimeter guide scope, the carbon fiber one here, and that's on a G11. And, you know, I imagine I could be on fairly uh, uh, significant winds and still uh, get fairly decent performance, so. Mm hmm So, um, so that's, 
that's the telescope, the dome. We just I just demonstrated. And you can see in the dome tab, it gives us a nice uh, graphic showing the uh, in the uh, location where the telescope's pointing and the slit where the slit's located right now. Uh, north is up on this diagram, where on the image you can see where the telescope's pointing north right now. Sure. It's off to the it's a, to the uh, left. The uh, so let me go ahead and and uh, uh, one thing we do before we do this is uh, let's get the dogs barking. No, that's not what we do. We get the. Uh, that's not like a sound effect <laughs> you have back there, just on a digital recording of a dog. No, that's that's uh, that's Actually, my dog. dog. They always they always uh, interrupt me. So one thing I've got to do that I didn't do yet is connect up the cart to seal. Okay. To the mount. Uh, that's a. That's, so this is similar to what we were doing Stellarium yesterday. Okay. Now, Jerry, why is it brown? I mean, wh why why is all that? Oh, okay. So what you see here is our actual horizon at the observatory. We have trees. This is north right here. But you don't have much of a horizon. Well, we do towards the. Uh, let me zoom back out a little bit here. So this is this is our horizon. We don't. Half of our sky is blocked to the north. Okay. But we've got good swath to the south, um, southeast, and we got we basically get the whole ecliptic, which is fine. Um, you know, but we we do have we do struggle at this location with our station one. We our station two and station three are located in the middle of the yard instead of up against the uh it's it was, this was built on a an existing deck that myron had a, a couple of piers already on and he actually had another dome system set there but the but oh. he built that system when the trees that are behind the the observatory were much lower and uh we just placed the dome we just placed the building there because it already existed and it was easy and we can do most of uh, pretty much all of our work has to be done in this area of the sky. So over the year, we do have good access to most objects, except to the north. I see. Mm -hmm. So that's what you see there. That's our local horizon. Hey, Jerry, uh, how did how did you map the horizon on this on the program? Without well, what Shannon can tracking. talk. Yeah, Shannon can talk about that. She's on the uh, she's on the chat. But so Shannon just recently remapped this horizon for us. Uh, where we go through each position with the telescope, we open the dome, we and we take pictures close to the horizon, and we detect what angle, what altitude the trees are at. So we actually use the telescope to figure out our horizon. I see. And uh, I'm sure Shannon will say something about that on the chat. James, uh, the astrophotographer, is commenting about the Exos 2. He says... I have used an 8-inch astrograph with a DSLR with guide scope, which was around 30 pounds and did not have any issues. On the Exos, the Exos 2 PMCA is rated for 28 pounds photographically. Mm -hmm. people, people will ask me, you know, say, well, can I put more on it? And I said, well, your car's speedometer may go to 120. The speed limit's 75. What you do with the car is your choice. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah, and we're not going to issue any tickets. We'll issue awards for anybody that can get. You know, well, Scott has demonstrated this with Alex with the weight, the bearing capacity with being <laughs> able to so motor fun. drive. Oh yeah, we not just kept pounds. loading that thing down. I think we added nearly a hundred pounds on it. I mean, it was still slew. You know, we are not doing astrophotography, but uh, it was slewing, and it was not. It was not missing. Uh, yeah, that's to demonstrate the how the motor drive, how the PMC drive system is. People have questions about are stepper motors really that great because yeah. they skip, you know. Balance was critical in that exercise, and y'all took care of the balance every time. Yep. Yeah, and I managed the inertial load in the firmware, so that managed it also. Where you, if you slew too fast or if you ramp up too fast, you'll start skipping, and I managed that in the code in the firmware. Yep. But the, uh, I, I always like to remind everybody the reason why we chose stepper motors is because if you don't balance it, okay, and you are straining the system, uh, you're not going to destroy the electronics and you're not going to destroy the motors. It, it'll groan and it'll make noises, 
you know, that the gear, the gear system is good, really, but it's not going to get hurt, you know, so. Right. I've heard of Takahashi mounts being destroyed, the gear system being destroyed from the servo motors. Yeah, servos will just continue to drive and drive and drive until something goes wrong. So, so, so our motors, when they, when the mag, when the, when the weight overcomes the torque settings, it makes a shattering noise. Dog like that. So, so <laughs> like that, except it's not dog like, but it's like that. And uh, people will call and say, it's making this horrible noise. Oh, it's balance. And, you know, no, it's not. Okay, take everything off. And, you know, that's the stepper motors letting go, protecting everything else. Yeah. Uh, and it makes, a, it makes a noise, but it doesn't damage anything. Right. Yep, so Mr. Thump30 says, that's why I want to upgrade. I know I'm pushing it. I have to keep it under two grand. Scott, will you give me a deal on the G11? If I could buy a G11 for under two grand, I would buy one for myself. <laughs> you know, we buy these mounts from uh, uh, Lasmandy. Um, I'm good friends with Scott Lasmandy, um, and we wanted to do something together for a long time. And so it was cool that we could do this project together. Um, you know, uh, you know, there's, uh, there is maybe the possibility of going to a dealer to get a better deal or something like that. But um, anyhow, why don't you give me a call sometime uh, and we can discuss it. If you want my private mobile number, I'm going to give it out again uh, on social media. It's 949-637-9075. Say that again slower so they can write it down. 949, you want to... No, oh, it's 949-637-9075. Now, don't share that with the public because, you know, it's just... <laughs> oh, we're only out on four different channels don't, here. <laughs> don't don't put it out on the internet. <laughs> Gosh, I hope yeah, this right. isn't being streamed live. Okay. Yeah, that's bad. Okay. So, to connect, to connect up to the uh, cart to seal, you've got this little uh, window... You can you can reach it via the uh, telescope menu item, telescope settings. Um, nope, that's not right. I'm sorry. It's the uh, connect telescope. I just and, used the uh, button over there. Yeah, there's a button over here also, which is the red one here. The uh, and so you go to select, and you want to select the path hub because that's your client, or that's this is a client that's going to. Uh, connect to the path where the path shares the mount with all the different clients. Maxim's a client. The carton to seal's a client. If I had PHD2 running on here, if I used an auto guider, that would be a client. If you have a camera system or a camera control program that uses, uh, that creates FITS headers and uses the information from the mount to put into the FITS header, you would connect that program to the path Path hub also. And this is this is where people make a mistake because click there, Jerry, real quick. The path hub selector. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so when you select path, it path is running. It knows it's already there, so it just comes up with this. The device so is already click, connected. Just click the chooser real quick. This is the chooser. No, the little down arrow. Oh, this. See it'll see that ESPMC eight telescope? People click that because they think they're connecting the PMC eight, and this is I get calls on this um, mm -hmm. that it's and it's like nope, connect to the Path Hub, and no, I'm connecting the PMC eight. No, it's connected to the Path Hub. You're connected to the Path Hub too, and once they figure that out, they're off and running. Right. Yep. So think of the the Path Hub like a waitress, okay, with a menu. Uh, and it's got different clients that she's going to the table and she's got four different people there taking orders from. And so the waitress is like the path hub. It, it goes and relays data to the mount or to the chef to go get your order. And then it's, then it serves you, serves each of the customers with their specific order. So that's what the path hub does to each of the clients. All right. So that's okay. Okay, hey Jerry, I uh, think Stephen Paul Romero asked the question based on what I just said of why is that in there then? 
in that chooser where I had you. Okay, go so the select so the chooser is just the platform. It it'll show you every driver you have available. So it doesn't know what client you're going to use to choose uh, a device. Okay, you have to determine for yourself. This client needs to use the telescope, or it needs to use the path, or it needs to use the. Uh, if I had a camera on here, it would go. You would select camera. Uh, so the chooser is part of the platform, the ASCOM platform. And you know, it's also called PMC8 telescope. That's a leftover from, from, from when telescopes and mounts were highly integrated things. Right. As opposed, so it, it thinks of it as, you know, a telescope. Yeah, that's, a, that's kind package. of a, yeah, that's kind of a misnomer. I always, I, I always thought about that. It should be called mount instead of telescope. But again, like, like uh, Kent said, this is when mounts and telescopes were integrated, uh, like you get with the Mead and Celestron systems with the smith yeah. yeah, brain. Yep. Yeah. What's the right, so server version of the ASCOM PMC8 driver so we could take Poth out of out of the picture? Yeah, we've we've had this request for a long time and Chris Moses has been working on it off and on. It's an open go to community project that I've been helping him on and he's he's actually very close. We had a long uh, learning curve to do with the way that development went on with the server, the software the server templates weren't very good. Um, there was problems with uh, the integration of an existing driver into the server uh, templates. And uh, Chris uh, took on that project and has worked it through and um, has finally got it close to beta testing. So I'm hoping to get it soon to be start testing on the observatory. And then we'll be releasing it later on this year, uh, so hopefully within the next month or two. What will that do for us, Jerry? So that'll be that'll be just like the path, except it'll be just our driver. It's it'll be a server driver, where you'll just connect. So in terms of the way you would do it on Card to Seal, you would select the PMC8 server, and it would act like the path does and as a device hub. So every device could connect directly to the PMC8 server driver as a instead of the path. That would be the difference. And um, we're integrating a, a control pad like this into it. And um, is it going to look more modern or is it going to look like 1994? Uh, how do you mean? Uh, you know, I've always thought that the interface just looks dated, if you will. You know, like the path interface, you mean? Yeah. Well, you got to have, I mean, if you look at the telescope buttons on the, I mean, you got to have buttons. Yeah. I mean, there's no way around that. Um, how else would it look? I mean, you you want a virtual joystick? Is that what you would want? Tesla. What's What does that mean? A slick. <laughs> slick yep. like a Tesla. Yeah, but if you slick it down too much, then you can't control anything. You don't have enough That's features right. to do anything. That's right. Yeah. I mean, you have to have, you have a certain autopilot number of everything, things. Huh? What do, they need what do they need the astronomer for? Oh, oh, a hole-in-one machine. That's what it's called. It's right, the hole-in-one machine. machine. Yeah, it's fun being the astronomer. You know, it's 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 fun to have. Well, to that's what this on. this right here. See this? See this right here with the uh, this? That's the hole-in-one machine right there. Okay, let's see the chart. So yeah. let's connect up. We haven't connected up yet. All right, so I'm going to connect it. Um, all right, it's connected. No, didn't take the long way around getting this thing connected, didn't we? <laughs> it's yeah. fun though to uh, uh, to see all the comments from the people online here. All right, so now if you see down here at the lower corner, let me zoom out just a little bit. There's where the telescope's pointing. Okay. You can see it's in it's in the trees. So I'm going to go select the uh, spot. Um, it looks like the moon's on the western side of the meridian, so I'm going to I'm going to slew to the moon. So you, you basically in Cart de Seal, it's just similar to Stellarium. It's not quite as pretty as Stellarium, but for me, it's very functional. 
Uh, you select the moon, you center on it. All right, I'm going to zoom up on it. I think it's close to a new moon. It's about four or five days past. Yeah. So <clears throat> you center on the moon, and then there's a button up here. Somebody says that's the sun. It's the sun? How do they know it's the sun? Oh, no. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that the, on MSRO Science? That's, I... uh, that's probably uh, that's Myron. Myron. Okay. Yeah, he probably signed in as MSRO Science. Oh, okay. okay. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't know who that, else it would they be. want to know where the telescope's located. Um, Shannon. It's Shannon. Oh, it's Shannon. Hi, Shannon. He's logged on as... Oh, okay. It's in Wilderness, Virginia, if you want to look it up. Yeah, Wilderness. It's 15, it's it's about 15 miles west of Fredericksburg, Virginia. Mm-hmm. So, all right, so I'm on the moon. I'm going to go ahead and slew to the moon, okay? So, I don't want to sink. I want to slew. So, and, Jer so, Jerry, just to the right of the slew button, there's another button. Yeah, this is a dangerous button. Not that one, the one to the right. Oh. The red one, that's emergency stop. So if you look right. up and see it's about to run into something, you can click it, and the telescope just immediately goes to stop mode. Right. And then it will return to, uh, once you start the slew again, it'll just pick up the count and go on down the road. Right. Now you can see there, you can see the cursor coming where the telescope's pointing, the white white circles. right on the moon so one of the things one of the little tedious things about carte de seal is that it, it this chart doesn't always track the uh the object that you're on so you can see the white circle is on the moon but the center of the chart is off a little bit so you have to come up and uh get the dogs barking again like that uh the uh um so what you have to do is you have to go um, track telescope to recenter this chart on where your target is, and that's where we're target. That's where we're pointing right now. And then the other thing you do with the observatory on the dome is you have to slave the dome to where the scope is pointing, and you'll see it swing around. So you can see that, and you'll see it swing around. There it goes. Yep. So how big a motor is that running the dome, Jerry? It's a, uh, it's like an eighth or, I don't think it's a quarter horsepower. It's like an eighth of a horsepower uh, motor. There's two of them. You can see one of them here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one on the opposite side also. I'm going to re I'm going to change this uh, exposure on the camera. Amy, the astro, wants to know how I, I, I had mentioned that uh, that this observatory is not really a public observatory, but it's used by the Mark Slade Remote Observatory or MSRO Science uh, team. It's also, I think, used by the Rappahannock Astronomy Club. Um, right. Right. Uh, so yep. you join either one of these organizations. The MSRO Science uh, group has a training application. Uh, which you can, um, you know, you can take. And how do they, if they're going through MSRO science, what's the path to actually so, access to the scope? So let me, uh, let me talk about that here. I'm going to bring up our website just real quick. Okay. Um, and you can also buy the experience to explore scientific. Right. You can get an introduction. Um, yeah. That's right. So this is our website. It's msrscience.org, and uh, basically we offer training and introductions to just to basically what I'm going through here, except in a longer, uh, a longer format. So on the main page, you can get contact information with the email and and Myron's phone number. And also at the bottom, we have a uh, way to send us an email. If you have, if you if you want to contact us and ask about what we do, 
but we've got other pages. We've got uh, for training. We've got our over here on the right hand side. We've got our training information about what we do and what you can learn about. And uh, so go there, and uh, you'll see see what we do. So it's MRSO Science dot org. M at, yeah, MSRO Science dot org. I put up a link on Facebook and YouTube uh, for the MSRO Science dot org forward slash training application. So, but you so can Jerry, browse the slide from there. Can you turn on the camera and give us a look at the moon? Well, or is it too uh, bright. No, it's not too bright. Uh, we can set the camera pretty uh, pretty fast. Let's. Uh, so I'm not sure if we're pointed at the moon. We'll see uh, if we can. It'll be. I'm not sure if. Um, I assume it was left in the park in the uh, sink position and then parked after that the last time it was used. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing up the camera control system on Maxim. And uh, I want to connect to it. I'm not going to use a cooler. Don't really need to use the cooler system. Uh, let's see here. What kind I'm going of what to take. Camera is it? This, we use QHY cameras. This is a 163 color camera. It's a 16 megapixel camera that we use bin. We bin it by two to use it for science. Uh, images with it's got a filter wheel on it that we hey, use. Jerry. Ben. Hey Jerry, uh -huh. uh, Shannon says, Tell Jerry I synced it last night, so tracking should be spot on. The moon well, should be there now. You, now you set us up. <laughs> That's all right, we'll, we'll we, get we there. can blame we'll, it on it. Yeah, yeah it's darn well right. better be blame dead center. <laughs> yeah, let's see, we'll see what it looks like. <laughs> we can blame it on Shannon now. That's yeah, right. we'll see what it looks like. It should be there. I mean, it should be pretty darn close. Uh, it's got a one-degree field of view, this camera. Shannon says, I ruined it now. Uh, let's see here. Look at all those craters. Yeah, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> it's, a it's a star oh, cluster. Oh, I know. It, that's what it's it going to be... Uh, Curious if we can get the exposure where we need it to be. Let's see here. I need to go to. Uh, Those are all your dust bunnies on. Huh? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's pointed at the moon. It would have shown up, but it's only a what is it? Three day old moon too. No, uh, it's three or four. I'll look yeah. it up. Maybe it's in there. Yeah. Don't no, it's so? not. No. Well, start the emergency yep. slew. Nope. That uh, I have to go back and look. Yeah, you and can't. See where you we're can't plate at. solve at this point, right? What's that? I said you can't plate solve at this point. No, no. Uh, the focus could be off a little bit too, but I don't. I don't see why it would be because we leave it focused pretty much. What for the is most that part. curve though? I do see kind of a curve in there. Right here. Uh, go up. Uh, over there, yeah. Uh, down just a little bit to the right. There you go. That. What's that? Oh. Maybe. Well, I don't know. If you can see how bright the sky is. It's hard to say. The moon is 4.74 days old. Oh, okay. So it's got pretty good sliver. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we're pointed at the moon. Well, let's just wander around and look for it. For no, I want to show some other things. We don't have <laughs> time for kidding. that. Just kidding. <laughs> like it, it's like trying to barrel sight something. This Not is gonna, easy as it yeah, that's right. We, yeah, remotely. Yeah. <laughs> trying to do it remotely. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, if he has stars, he could. Uh, he if could I had another scope with it. a finder scope yeah. on it with a camera, we could find it pretty straightforward. But we don't have that. Yeah. Shannon says she focused it too. Okay. So that's, well, it's all Shannon's fault then. We'll have to. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to try it after it gets after dark and see where how far off we are. So after dark, you can figure out where you are because you can see stuff, right? Yep, exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, Wes says it could be the crescent. That's what I think it is. This right here? Yeah. That could be. I don't know if... Um... Tell you what, it's a pretty bright day here today. So. Yeah. That could be it. It looks like it's about the right size. Yeah. Let me see if I can stretch it a little bit. Now you see, the problem is you just got too much noise. Yeah. Well, what's the temperature today? It's pretty hot today, right? Yeah. So if we got a. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna disconnect. I think I did disconnect. I'm gonna close that. So on the focuser, we've got a temperature. It's 31 degrees Celsius on the uh, on the focuser, which is about 80, 82 <laughs> like degrees Donald, or something. Like be a monkey's uncle too. <laughs> and then Amy the Astro says vignetting question mark lots of laughs. <laughs> So that's how the Maxim, or that's how the card to seal gets connected to the scope. Uh, we did the same thing here with Maxim DL. We connected. Uh, let me let me let me show you that real quick. So uh, so Jerry, do you guys jump from like program to program as you're using the scope? You have the planetarium program, which would be card to seal, and then you jump over to Maxim DL. Uh, to uh, take control of the telescope and the camera after that, or yeah, so we basically oh. decide on what our targets are going to be, and we use we use carte de seal to navigate to the target. Okay. Like I just did, and then we jump over to Maxim DL and set up, and then start taking our images and set up. So one of the things you can do in carte de seal, I'll go back to the webcam, is under the camera control system. Okay. You can um, set up this autosave sequence. All right. Okay. We we set up all your exposures that you want to do. Um, so you basically like. So if I'm taking pictures of the moon, I'm going to type in moon here at the subject line. Okay. And set up a sequence. Set the exposure time here. Maybe it's a uh, zero point. Oh, one seconds, the binning, uh, how many how many frames I want, like 200, maybe, whatever it is. Yeah. And then you hit OK. And then uh, once you've got that set up, you just start the sequence, and it, it's still like, like Sequence Generator Pro. It's the same kind of thing. It starts firing off, and, and the telescope system, Maxim controls the dome, it's slaving. So as the telescope tracks the object, the dome will change uh, position to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. So every 10 degrees or so is when the dome changes. So right now you can see that the target is at 147 degrees in azimuth. You can see that update every 10 seconds. Yeah. And the actual dome azimuth is at 144 degrees. So once it gets to a certain position... It'll move the dome to keep it to keep it in the window. Right. Keep it in the slip. Uh, so Jerry, on your cars to seal does not look like the looks like you got more stars there than what loads. Oh yeah. I've got uh, in the, that's in one the thing the foundation. Like about, right. I've got I've got uh, professional level databases here in Cart to Seal. Uh, so let me uh, let me center on another topic, another object here, so I can zoom in and show you. Uh, I'm going to center on that, and then um, I'll zoom up here. Now, when I zoom up, it's going to bring up. So right now, it's got the Tycho stars and the HD stars, okay, mm -hmm. and the Bayer stars. That's the uh, these Greek letter stars are the Bayer designators. And as I zoom up. And get it's closer and closer. Right now, it's got a seven-degree field of view. It's going to pop up uh, some other because you're zooming in enough to activate the other database. Right. 
Right, exactly. And so yeah, I think my uh, up oh, there it goes. Okay, it took a while. I don't know why. So now you're st starting to see these stars. Okay. Uh, you see it's labeled UCAC. Okay. UCAC four. These are the. This is the U.S. Naval Observatory database of stars down to 18th magnitude. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, this is a professional level database that we use when we do our astrometry, where we measure the position of objects. Mostly, it's uh, the asteroids. We use these precise locations in this professional level database to measure the the asteroid position. <clears throat> uh, so that's why you have these little stars here. And if you look here, I'm going to bring up the details about it. This one's a 13th magnitude star, so it's a fairly bright UCAC star. And it gives you all this great information about the oh, yeah. star and its location. Yeah. And uh, so there's another database that we have that's actually the newer one. This is a UCAC 4 database that was put out about almost... 10 years ago, about 10 years ago. Uh, let me let me click on it. I don't know if you can see that one. Well, where is it at? That one is, uh, that's 12th magnitude. These are fairly bright. That's 13th. It goes up to 18th magnitude. But there's another database called the URAT that the U.S. Naval Observatory has put out also. That's the most recent catalog and kind of like this, some of that you rat you rat yeah the you rat so if you look up you rat in the in your browser you'll find the uh, the observatory in, in uh in flagstaff they moved it to flagstaff they moved it to the southern hemisphere to do all the measurements uh huh. that they used to create this database the uh, the what was I going to say? That's actually an 8-inch refractor that they used to create this database, oh. believe it or not, with a giant red filter on the front of it. Excellent. Uh, so that's that's what that's for. Hey, Jerry, right, stop right there scrolling. Um, mm -hmm. You have the camera shows the QHY-163 Bin 2. Right. Is, is that camera orientation locked, or do you have a camera rotator? No, it's locked. We we align the camera north, south, east, west. Uh, so let me go to. So this is the altitude azimuth coordinate system, Altaz. So we typically, when we're doing imaging, we go to the equatorial coordinate system, and you'll see how the camera is aligned with the equatorial coordinate system. So uh -huh. what happens? So what happens if you want to frame up a pretty nebula that's part of the eastern wall of Bell Nebula? You just deal with it we just that's that's the way this is for science imaging so that's the primary right. use of this telescope so we don't we don't reorient it we don't have anybody there to do it we don't have a rotator to reorient the position angle right uh which that's what it's called the position angle yeah so you're not um, making it does pretty pictures but it's not it's not designed for this it's designed for science right right i mean you can rotate it once you in your in your processing, you can crop it and, and rotate it like you want uh, after the fact. Uh, if we were to do pretty pictures, but typically I like uh, I I don't know I'm just partial to aligning the camera north south east west because I know which direction is which on the frame. You know I don't have to think about it. Right. Um. So we're still at the, let's go ahead and salute to this object to where we're at here. Epsilon Leo. Make sure I'm centered and then I'll slew. And then you'll see the, the scope. There it is. All right. And if we look at the, and you see the dome move? Yeah. So if we look at the telescope coordinates, so when you take an image and plate solve it, it there's two different coordinate uh, epochs. 
okay, for the equatorial system. Right now, we, when we slew the telescope, we want to know where the object in the, is in the sky in the current right ascension and declination uh, coordinates, okay? That's the apparent radiant coordinates, okay? When you take an image and you do a plate solve, it, it, it normalizes or it corrects it to a specific point in time so you can compare images uh, directly, and it's called J2000. So if, if most people are familiar that the Earth uh, poles precess. It's like a, it's like a uh, gyroscope that wobbles. When you see when it starts to slow down, it starts to rotate and precess. It wobbles. That's what the Earth does over a 26,000 year period. Okay, so it takes 26,000 ye years for the poles to precess one full rotation. Okay, that wobble, and uh, and that's what the right ascension declination coordinates are based on where the poles are currently, okay, it changes. So that's why when you do a polar alignment and you see Polaris has changed position in the polar scope, it, back in 2000, it was at 46 degrees, uh, 46 arc minutes from the pole, from the North Celestial Pole. Now it's closer to 40 minutes uh, from the North Celestial Pole. Uh, and, and, and that's why in a, in a polar finder scope, if you have one that has a circle, it's not in the circle anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. Guys, uh, we have run uh, about an hour. Uh, we have uh, another meeting to go to uh, right after this. So um, we're going to we're going to cut this off at, at this point. This is part one of two. And uh, Jerry Hubble will pick this up tomorrow. Uh, for going through the Mark Slade Remote Observatory again. Again, if you want to uh, learn more about the Mark Slade Remote Observatory, you can go to msro or msroscience.org. If you want to know more about remote observatories, uh, Jerry Hubble wrote a fantastic book on, on what it takes to set up your own remote observatory. Um, of course, uh, you have the guys here. We've been showing you a lot of remote access with the, uh, uh, the PMC-8 and all of its versatility and everything. So uh, you can, you can uh, design your dream remote observatory setup, you know, from a little mini setup uh, like they do have at, uh, at the Mark Slade place. Uh, we haven't shown you that yet um, uh, to, uh, you know, something that would be uh, quite substantial. So, um, but... Uh, it's, it's been fun uh, hanging out with you guys uh, this afternoon and uh, keep looking up and come back tomorrow. Remember to like, click, share, subscribe, hit the little bell, uh, you know, support our program. Uh, we love having you here and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep, thank you. Bye-bye.